Can you all see that? And is it uh, large enough for you there? Yep, that looks good. Okay, great, thanks. Um, so my name is Lisa Moffat and I'm founder and principal at Resilience Planning. And I led the team um, that developed the strategy um, with the community and for the community. I wanna begin by saying that over my 20 year career, I've not experienced a community so passionate, involved and committed to a project. Uh, from the involvement of counselors McFadden and Rye and Selkirk College representatives on the Housing Advisory Committee, to the breadth of experience and lived experience on that committee, to the organization and commitment of your manager of planning development and sustainability, Marie Durand, uh, to your CAO's participation, thank you, Chris Barlow, to the community serving organizations we interviewed, and to individuals with lived experience of homelessness who participated in the project. The community is committed to the success of this project, and it really was a beautiful experience for my team and I to be part of this work. So thank you for giving us the opportunity. I'd like to thank my teammates, Alex Cron, Ida mass and Karen Finley for their valuable expertise on this project. Uh, I'll give you a brief overview of the, um, our process, the timeline, our engagement activities, an overview of the housing strategy. So I'll talk about the strategies and just list off some of the actions within them. I think there's about 70 actions in there, so I won't read all of them. Um, we'll talk about the land inventory evaluation criteria, and uh, I'll go over some next steps. So hopefully getting to your question there, Councillor Ray. So this is our timeline for the project. We began in late October, early November with a background document review. We did some interviews just to understand a bit about the, the culture in Castlegar, who the community serving organizations are, how best people wanted to be engaged. Um, and we had several meetings with the housing advisory committee throughout the project. So our first one was, um, I believe in February. And then we hosted a public survey and a series of public workshops. We developed a draft strategy and presented it back to the housing advisory committee. Um, and then we revised the strategy based on um, feedback from staff in the housing advisory committee. And so here we are at this committee of the whole in August and we'll close the loop with the community and seek council approval on the project um, in September. Uh, in terms of our engagement process, engagement took place from January to May, 2021 and consisted of the following activities. We had eight interviews with some key actors in the community through January and February. We hosted three workshops through March and April, uh, one on student housing that had 10 participants, one on subsidized and supportive housing with eight participants, a workshop on market rental and ownership housing that also had 10, 10 participants. And then um, we interviewed other folks um, as we learned having a workshop for uh, people who access emergency shelter and transitional shelter uh, workshop format doesn't work great for them. So we contacted back with some of those community serving organizations and also got in touch with people living with homelessness um, and also interviewed the RCMP in May. We hosted a public survey that was that ran from um, March 8th to April 2nd and we got 344 responses to that. Uh, we ran a phone line in case people wanted to just call us and leave us a message with their thoughts about the housing strategy and so that ran from March to April. It was not um, well used though. And then we had four meetings with the 18 member um, housing advisory committee and we did a lot of partnering with community organizations to um, share information out about the project and do promotion. Um, to, to review and provide feedback on the draft housing strategy, we hosted an additional meeting with the Housing Advisory Committee, so a fourth meeting, um, and we will host a Close the Loop event to present the engagement findings and how they influence the housing strategy um, with the public. And then we had regular meetings um, with staff and with key staff throughout the project. Um, this year, the purpose of the housing strategy is really to create a roadmap for how we can ensure everyone has a place to call home in Castlegar now into the future. And so we use this housing wheel to define different segments of housing where emergency shelter provides temporary accommodation for typically under 30 days for people in immediate need. Transitional housing is housing for stays of two to three years and includes on or off site um, support services to help residents. Supportive housing is longer term housing with ongoing assistance aligned with need. Uh, subsidized housing is operated typically operated by a third party nonprofit provider or cooperatives who provide supplemental rates through ongoing government subsidies. Um, rental housing, there's two components there, market, primary market, so purpose-built rentals, and secondary market, so secondary suites or private housing that's rented. And ownership housing can be fee simple, condominium, or shared equity, and includes multi-unit and single detached housing. 
Our guiding principles as part of this project, really, uh, there was two. So housing is a fundamental human right and to take a systems approach. So the strategy considers housing that's dignified, accessible, attainable, and appropriate shelter as a basic human right. Uh, diverse options across the housing spectrum, including supportive rental and ownership options are key to providing adequate housing for all. And just to quote the UN Declaration on Human Rights from 1976 that informs this, adequate shelter and services are a basic human right which places an obligation on governments to ensure their attainment by all people, beginning with direct assistance to the least advantage through guided programs of self-help and community action. Government should endeavor to remove all impediments hindering attainment of these goals. So the strategy also recognizes that housing is a really complex system. And the strategy works to address housing needs across the housing wheel that I showed you on the previous slide and recognizes that all segments of the housing wheel are important com components of the system. An increase in affordable and dignified homes in one segment of the housing wheel will have a positive impact across the entire housing system. For example, an increase in quality student housing may also increase the supply of rental homes available to other households as students move into the new housing supply. To increase um, access of affordable and dignified homes in Castlegar, the strategy works to strengthen existing and foster new relationships in the community. So into our strategies here, the first strategy is creating the conditions to support housing development and remove barriers. So some of the themes under um, this strategy are to enable the diversity of housing types that are responsive to need. So this includes a variety of housing like detached housing, duplexes, townhouses, and multi-residential buildings, as well as mixed use buildings. For example, a building might have retail or other uses on the ground floor and residential uses on the upper floors. And some of the actions here really include updating the OCP and zoning bylaw to create those conditions. Another theme here is encouraging rental and affordable housing. So recognizing that rental homes, including purpose-built rental and secondary rental are integral components of a healthy housing stock. And there's currently a severe shortage of these rental homes in Castlegar. So some of the actions here, again, include updates to the zoning bylaw, ensuring no loss of uh, existing purpose-built rental and removing barriers um, to information so that people understand how they can develop purpose-built rental. Um, another theme under here is supporting accessory dwelling units. So um, both attached, so secondary suites and detached. So laneway homes or carriage homes or granny flats can increase the number of rental units available and support intergenerational family living and affordable uh, ownership opportunities. So here we're again, looking at updates to the zoning bylaw, um, allowing the subdivision of detached dwelling lots to enable a detached accessory dwelling to be sold separately working with local banks and credit unions to create no or low interest loans um, so that people can develop these types of units. Another theme here is removing barriers to emergency shelter, transitional and supportive housing. So emergency shelter and transitional housing and supportive housing are important segments of the housing wheel and essential housing types in order to support all people who live in Castlegar. And when we talk about um, supportive housing, that also helps people um, age in place as they age out of their perhaps single family home and looking for something with more support so they can stay in the community. So our actions here really include working collaboratively with service providers and then making use of existing housing stock is the last theme under strategy one. And here we talk about monitoring the number of empty homes in Castlegar and monitoring short-term rentals to ensure that they're not having a negative impact on the available uh, rental stock in town. Our second strategy is embedding wellness in housing and two themes emerge in here. So here, when we talk about embedding wellness, we're recognizing that a home is a place where people have the necessary support to not only survive, but also thrive. And in many cases, this means that housing needs to be combined with essential services, such as mental health support and childcare, as well as harm reduction resources and trauma-informed approaches to service, uh, social service provision. So the provision of permanent adequate housing for people who are currently unhoused is the first step in supporting vulnerable residents. And here are two themes are embedding wellness. So creating opportunities and partnerships for mental health support. Uh, other actions include locating support of traditional, transitional housing in Castlegar so people don't have to leave their home community. Um, and then location of housing and transportation is really important and co-locating those. So here's some of our actions include working with BC Transit to evaluate uh, routes and frequencies and working with um, working to locate housing, including higher density housing. So multiplexes, townhouses, townhouses et cetera. 
um, for lower income household students and seniors along transit routes so they can still access all of the places um, they need to to get to, to meet daily needs. Our third strategy um, really focuses on you folks. So it talks about municipal leadership where municipalities have a lot of power to help support the development of housing in Castlegar. Stepping into leadership where housing is concerned is really key to the success of addressing the needs of the community. So it's important for the implementation of this strategy that it's ac adequately resourced, both in terms of funding, land and capacity. Sorry, well, that's more than one um, to deliver the strategy to meet the housing needs. So when we talk about funding resources, we're talking about things like creating a housing reserve, applying to leverage funding um, in that reserve to other levels of government, uh, the possibility of donating land to nonprofit housing operators and advocating to senior levels of government to continue to provide additional funding. Um, acquiring land is a theme here. So um, working, uh, sorry, removing land from the speculative market. So using municipal owned land uh, resources to uh, support housing, providing or advocating for regional staffing resources. So a regional staff resources, resource dedicated to housing can help ensure the successful implementation of this strategy. And staff can also be responsive to the housing needs in the region by helping people on a daily basis to address and remove barriers to access housing by liaising with housing providers in the nonprofit sector and the development industry supporting funding applications to other levels of government and leveraging funding for housing developers, coordinate with other housing staff and providers in the region and continue to be responsive. So there, there may be possibilities of working with the Columbia Basin Trust to fund the creation of a part-time position at the regional level for a housing coordinator. And really it, it came apparent um, working through this project that addressing housing at the regional level is really important as you are smaller um, centers that each have things that support the region. And so uh, having a regional housing response came out as really important here. Another theme under this municipal leadership strategy is creating partnerships. So this is recognizing that you don't have sole responsibility as a municipality to deliver on housing, nor do you have all the tools or resources to do that. But through creation of partnerships with different levels, different levels of government and different actors in the housing sector, including nonprofit housing providers, the development sector, builders and other private sector actors, all these relationships are really important to secure more housing and housing that's more responsive to meeting the needs of the community. So, you know, here are some of the actions look like support and work with housing operators, local agencies and developers and senior governments to partner and facilitate a range of um, housing that meets seniors needs. Another interesting piece here is um, looking at legalizing and incentivizing something called a housing swap where basically somebody who owns a single family house would um, swap their land. So the property that they live on would basically donate it for the development of a multi-unit building. So it could be like a fourplex. And then they're gifted back one of the units in that new development. So just looking at some really innovative ways that you can address housing needs. Advocating for resources, another um, theme in this strategy. So advocating to higher levels of the government for more funding and supports for housing really can help you address housing needs in your community. And in addition to this, advocating to the community to address the stigma that people experience when trying to access housing um, can be a role of the municipality to help create the conditions for safe access to housing. Keeping people in housing is another theme here. So any number of unfortunate situations could lead to households being at risk of losing their housing. For example, somebody loses their job, the property owner is wanting to rent to a family member, the property owner is renovating, healthcare expenses are too high, somebody has an injury, they have to care for a family member, which impacts family expenses um, and imp impedes on a person's ability to work. So the city can create and implement, implement policies based on changes at the provincial level to prevent um, evictions. And there is legislation being considered now at the provincial level around uh, rent evictions. And so we have an action there for the city to support that uh, once it's approved. The fourth strategy, the fourth of five strategies is around innovation. So here, um, a couple of themes, intergenerational housing. So in order to accommodate the diverse needs of the community, Castle Gar should really explore opportunities for seniors to be able to age in place. And aging in place goes beyond aging in the same like house that you've lived in, but aging in the community that's, that has the supports and your, your connectivity networks. So while expanding housing opportunities for young families and students, we really wanna be cognizant of seniors being able to age in place. 
So creating a home share program, creating a community hub with integrated services is like a one shop stop. And um, diverse housing tenure is another theme here. So housing diversity includes a variety of housing typology. So detached housing, duplexes, townhouses, row houses, multi-residential buildings, and different tenures. So from sole ownership to cooperatives, to co-housing, condominium, rental, subsidized rental, supportive housing, transitional housing. And all that housing meets the needs of people at all stages of life, all abilities, and through all challenges to access housing. So we're encouraging innovative tenure like uh, co-housing, land trusts, and uh, supporting manufactured and modular homes, creating protections for manufactured home parks. And uh, then the last theme under strategy for is using city owned lands for housing. So uh, as part of this project, there was a land inventory developed and then we've identified evaluation criteria for how to make decisions to um, purchase, partner, dispose of, or use land. And I'll get into that in a minute. And then our last strategy really is around monitoring and evaluation. And I think this probably gets at Councillor Rye's question about, okay, how are we gonna do this? So monitoring the execution of the strategy is important as it informs how successfully the strategy is being implemented. Obviously updating the strategy is um, part of the monitoring. So your housing needs assessment was developed before the requirements from the province, but it still uh, needs to be updated every five years. So I think it was done in uh, 2020. Um, so updating the housing strategy should come in a conjunction with updating the housing needs assessment every five years. So allocating resources to do that. Monitoring targets. So the targets contained in the report uh, should be reflected in any OCP updates or amendments and staff should report on the progress of these every two years to ensure the strategy is being successfully implemented. Um, targets that are listed in this strategy are from the housing needs assessment. And so here we're also looking for you to update the targets when the housing strategy is updated. And then ongoing community engagement. So the Castle Guard community, particularly people who are um, living in housing under affordable housing programs should be engaged with as part of monitoring and updating the strategy to ensure that their lived experience aligns with the data outcomes and the successful implementation of the plan. And any differences in lived experience versus the quantitative data and implementation should be addressed. And so I'll just move on to the land inventory evaluation criteria. So these slides are a little bit messy, but really um, you're just gonna pay attention to the the top row and then the green row and then the first uh, column. So as part of our work, we conducted a land inventory of current property holdings of the municipality, which I'm not showing you because that changes all the time and it's not part of this, uh, it's not, it doesn't form part of the strategy, but it's a tool that we leave with you. Uh, the land inventory is intended to be a living document and to help inform decisions about whether to purchase, hold, sell, develop, or partner to do something with municipally owned properties where housing is concerned we developed these evaluation criteria to help the city make decisions about the land it currently has and land it might want to purchase. So here you see the potential application of the evaluation criteria in the top row. So uh, acquisition by the municipality for action on lands held by the municipality, for trade on other lands or action to benefit the municipality, for sale by the municipality or, or another reason that you'd be evaluating the lands. Um, the evaluation criteria uh, here include a strategic directive match. So how does it line up with affordable housing opportunity, revitalization, mixed use, economic development, or conservation lands? Um, and whether there are, and so then we look at municipal staff resources. So um, do you have the municipal staff resources to implement um, whatever it is that you want to do with this um, property? And then the next set of evaluation criteria are around location. So um, is it, what's the location of the um, property? Is the lot size suitable for meeting the strategic directive? Is the current zoning and land use suitable for meeting the strategic directive? The next group of criteria is around um, cost of opportunity. So is the acquisition cost reasonable? If the land is held, are the annual operating and maintenance cost, maintenance cost man manageable? If the municipality is developed, are costs associated with the development of the property manageable um, or are they within budget? And just the last slide here on evaluation criteria, we look at um, 
building unit development. So does the building unit or the proposed development meet the strategic directive? And then timeline for development or for occupied units. And here we're looking at, does the total acquisition timeline meet the strategic directive? So I know that was a lot of information. I'll just leave some space here for questions before I move on to next steps. <laughs> 